Section 3.2, Measures of Dispersion. For the objectives of this section, we want to compute the range of a variable from raw data, compute the variance of a variable from raw data, compute the standard deviation of a variable from raw data, and use the empirical rule to describe the data that are bell-shaped. In Section 3.1, we discuss measures of central tendency. These measures describe the typical value of a variable. We would also like to know the amount of dispersion in the variable. Dispersion is the degree to which the data are spread out. The next example demonstrates why measures of central tendency alone are not sufficient in describing a distribution. So, for example, we have data, we're going to compare two different sets. And the data that's going to be in StackCrunch represent the IQ scores of a random sample of 100 students from two different universities. For each university, we want to compute the mean IQ score and then draw a histogram using a lower class limit of 55 for the first class and a class width of 15. And then we're going to comment on the results. So I'm going to open this data up in StatCrunch. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take a look at the mean. So we're going to select Stat, go to Summary Stats, go to Columns. We want to highlight both University A and University B, and all we want to do is find out what the mean is. So let's take a look at the mean. So we can see here, down here, that University A has a mean of 100 and University B has a mean of 100.01, which if we round it to one decimal place would be 100.0. Okay, so therefore we have the mean. Okay, now what we want to do is now we want to create the histograms. So how do we create the histograms? Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and select graph. We're going to go to histogram. Okay, we're going to highlight both of those because we're going to do both of them. Okay, and then we're going to come down here and we're going to start at a lower class limit of 55. So we're going to start at 55 and then we're going to have the class width of 15 and then we're going to select compute. Okay, so here you can see the histogram of University A and then if we take a look at the histogram of University B. Okay, which is now here in this picture. Now both universities have the same mean IQ, so we saw here for the summary statistics they both have the same mean, which is hovering around 100. But although the two histograms are quite different, okay, and so the IQs at University A are more spread out. You can see how it's more spread out, or we say dispersed, while the IQs at University B are grouped more closely to the mean. Okay, now, objective number one, we want to determine the range of a variable from raw data. Okay, now, the simplest measure of dispersion is the range. To compute the range, the data must be quantitative. The range R of a variable is the difference between the largest and smallest data value. That is, the range is equal to R, which is equal to the largest data value minus the smallest data value. So, for example, we want to be able to compute the range of a set of data. Okay, so in our example here, it says the data in the table below represent the first exam scores of 10 students enrolled in introductory statistics. Compute the range. So again, the range is equal to, again, the largest data value minus the smallest data value. Well, if we take a look at the largest data value, we can see that Justine represents the largest data value. And then we can see that Jennifer has a score of 62, so that is the smallest data value. So if we take 94, okay, and then we subtract 62, which again, we want to find the range, well, that's going to give us a value of 32. So in summary, again, the data in the table represent the first exam scores of 10 students enrolled in introductory statistics. In this example, we computed the range. To calculate the range, again, we subtract the largest data value minus the smallest data value. So largest data value was 94, the lowest data value was 62, and in this case, the range will be 32 points. Okay, now let's take a look at another note about the range because it's not, it's not resistant, okay? And the reason why it's not resistant, let's say that we decide to change the score of Jennifer to go from 62 to 28. Okay, so now let's find the range of that scenario. So if we want to find the range, the largest data value is still 94. And if we subtract 28, then we get a value of 66. 
So the range now would be 66 points, and that's a pretty big difference from the first one. That shows the range is not resistant because an extreme value really has an impact on its calculation.